Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to a Q&A. As always, friends, we appreciate you sending the questions. We've got hundreds and hundreds of them, and we're going to be getting to them as quickly as possible, so we appreciate your patience. Um, let's jump right in today. We have Jeff H. from Waukee, Iowa. And Jeff says, hello guys. I recently came across your site after I clicked through on one of your Instagram posts. Glad to hear that uh, at least one person looks at our Instagram. Your content is great and your production quality is top notch. Well, there you go, Dev. Top notch you are. I am also a Midwestern fly fisherman, but a few states away over in Iowa. Uh, that's okay. Locally, I would most likely be fishing ponds and small rivers for largemouth bass, crappies, and the occasional walleye. That's cool. A few hours to the northeast, I can target the trout of the driftless streams and rivers. I have what I hope is a simple question. Is there a good starting weight and length for typical Midwestern fishing? As a newbie, I don't want to get too specific with my setup. Also, in my online shopping, I have noticed that some reel manufacturers put a range on their reels, say three to four, five, six. Is it better to size up or size down? And then Jeff goes on to say, thanks for all you guys are doing to make this sport accessible and less intimidating. Keep up the good work. Well, Jeff, thanks for watching. Really appreciate the kind words and we're gonna keep up the good work. Uh, at least we're gonna try. So uh, let's get to the first question. Is there a good starting weight or length for typical Midwestern fishing? And I would say, Jeff, go back um, and review episode one, two, and three of getting, or maybe it's two, three, and four of getting started in fly fishing. And that should help you out quite a bit with the rods. Uh, but let's go back to, you're talking about small rivers for largemouth, crappies, and occasional walleyes. But then you're also going to get up to the driftless. So, um, you know, the number one selling outfit across the country, the number one selling line weight for folks getting into fly fishing, and I refer to this in my classes and my videos as Average Joe or Average Jane, is by far a 9 foot 5 weight. And there's good reason for that. A nine foot five weight can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it'll cover most everything we do in the Midwest, with the exception of say, steelhead or salmon or pike or muskie or things like that. So the things that you mentioned, um, I'm gonna have to say that the average Joe nine foot five weight is probably where you wanna be, okay? If, if you didn't mention the trout of the driftless area, I would probably, and we were just talking about largemouth, crappies, and the occasional walleye, I probably would have said nine foot six weight. But you throw that driftless thing in there and the trout thing, I'm probably gonna go nine foot five weight is what's gonna be best for you. Um, if you weren't fishing for largemouth, crappies, and walleye, and you were just focusing on the driftless, I might be talking about a four weight. So uh, I would say nine foot five weight's where you wanna be, uh, Jeff, and um, I, I think you'll be in good shape. Now your second question is you say that the reel manufacturers put a range on their reels. Um, say a three to four weight, a five to a six weight. And yes, um, that reel size um, will accommodate the right amount of backing and a three weight or a four weight line. Some reels might even be able to go three, four, five. And then yes, five, six, that will take a five weight and the proper amount of backing and or a six weight and the proper amount of backing. So it's not an exact science. Um, you know, this particular size of reel may fit a five, six, maybe even a seven. I, I think your, your question is, is it better to size up or size down? I would say that if I had to pick, I would, I would be sizing up. Okay, for example, even if I had, and I do this pretty often, um, I've got an eight and a half foot four weight rod and I put a five, six weight reel on there. And the reason is um, because I'm gonna get a larger diameter out of it. It's gonna increase my crank ratio, so I'm bringing in more line. And I like to have a little bit of weight on the back end. It helps me keep that the balance point or the fulcrum point, if, you look, if you've looked at some of our casting stuff, it helps me keep that fulcrum point just a little more stationary. 
You know, I think everybody kind of is worried about the weight of a reel. It's one of the first questions we get. Well, this one's lighter than this one. And you know, it's only a couple of ounces. It's not gonna make that big of a difference in your day of fishing. If your arm gets tired because your reel is two ounces lighter, or excuse me, two ounces heavier, then you, pr you probably need to work out, lift some weights. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. So I would size up um, and go with the larger of the two options possibly. Uh, but then again, it just depends. Um, most of your five, six weight uh, rated fly reels are gonna be just fine for that nine foot five weight that you're gonna look into. And if that doesn't help you out enough, pick up the phone and give me a call. You know, call us here at the shop. This is what we do for a living and uh, we'll get you pointed in the right direction. So uh, when you're ready for that outfit, uh, remember that uh, I, I gotta pay this guy over here that does all this great top notch camera work. He's very expensive. So when you're ready to buy that outfit, Jeff, give me a call here at the shop and we'll get you into the right uh, thing uh, on, on the, uh, the right budget, okay? So uh, I got your address here in Waukee, Iowa and we'll get you out a hat and a fly box. Thanks. All right, next question for today comes from Jacob S and he's in Friendswood, Texas. Um, and it looks like on here, he says texting would work best. You want us to text you the hat in the fly box? Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later, but anyways. Jacob says that uh, super tough fishing for carp. Yeah, true. That's part of what makes it fun. So what is your go-to fly and some good tips? I've had many situations where I've been fishing and sea carp tailing and eating hard, but won't commit to any of the flies that I throw. Also love all the videos, super informational and helpful. Thank you all. Well, Jacob, thank you. Appreciate you watching. Uh, glad you like them and glad it's helping you out. Um, I don't know whether you've seen it or not, but uh, we do have a DVD called Carpin, and that is, I'm sure, accessible right there at that link. And I would say, if you haven't already, watch Carpin, and I think that's gonna help you out a whole bunch. Um, but the first question is about the fly. And I would say that these days, um, my favorite fly is probably the Clouser Swimming Nymph. And if you go back a little bit, I don't know, a couple of months ago, we released a, a tying video where I tied that Clouser Swimming Nymph, and I kind of have a carp version of it. It should be available on our website also. In fact, I, I just got a mess of them tied up over the weekend and uh, they're now on our website where you can buy that carp version of the Clouser Swimming Nymph. It's a go-to. It seems to work everywhere um, and it just flat out catches fish. Uh, you can also go to our website, go into the fly department and just click on the carp fly department and you're gonna see our recommendations and why we sell them. Um, you know, it's, it sounds kind of stupid to say, but we try not to sell carp flies that don't work. We've gone through and picked out the 15 or 20 of our favorite patterns that work for us around here, and I, I think they'll probably work for you as well. Um, make sure that you have a couple of crayfish patterns also. Um, an another couple of uh, tips is that when you're targeting the carp, okay, a lot of people have a tendency to throw that fly right at their head. And I think this is true with almost any kind of fish, and I see it with trout fish, and I see it with saltwater anglers. They try to target, boom, right in front of their face. Or worse yet, if you overshoot that fish. It's very, very important that you get your fly well out in front of the fish, number one, so that he, he doesn't hear it hit. As you are, and you know, carp are very spooky fish. And if he hears it hit, he's gonna spook off, okay? So you need to anticipate um, his direction and where he's traveling. Of course, he's got his nose down, he's feeding. So anticipate. And then make sure as he approaches that fly and you start to move that fly, make sure that that fly is going away from the carp. This is very critical. If that fly at all comes towards the carp's face, 
That's a big red flag to, flag to him. He's probably not going to eat the fly and he's probably going to spook, okay? No self-respecting nymph or crayfish or bait fish has ever swum at the mouth of a carp, okay? It needs to be going away like it's trying to escape and that's hopefully going to get his attention and look much more natural and it's almost like that they say don't run from a grizzly bear if you get that going away from him hopefully he's going to turn and grab it okay um, I would also see say be very stealthy um, don't wear a bright pink fishing shirt like you might down in the tropics um, dress in drab clothing and then as you're walking, think of yourself as a heron, sneak along, and then only cast to feeding fish. I think we talked quite a bit about that in the DVD. Um, there's many nights that I go out carp fishing and I don't even make a cast. I just don't see feeding fish that are worth casting to. If you just go out there and start flailing around and start throwing at every carp out there, you're going to stir things up, you're going to spook things. They also emit a pheromone that, that tells other carp in the, in the area um, that there's danger or um, something not right. So don't just go cast and just pick your fish. Pick that one fish, stalk him, get in good position and make a really good presentation Okay, out in front of him and anticipate and make sure it's going away from him. So, Jacob, make sure you, that you tune in and watch the carping. Let me know if you have any other questions. We'll be getting out on the water and doing some carp, further carp stuff, so stay tuned. And uh, I've got your address. Actually, your address is here, so we don't have to text you. We're probably not going to call you, although you can call us at any time with any questions. So we'll, uh, we'll get a hat and a fly box on its way to Friendswood, Texas. We appreciate you as always. So, friends, thanks for watching. Be sure to tell all your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel, go to matterforoutfitters.com and shop away so we can continue to afford uh, this top-notch production quality that's provided by the man behind the camera. So thanks as always for watching. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.